Oh hey, hello there. With the brand new M2 MacBook Air coming out from Apple, it's time to answer the question, well, which MacBook should you actually buy? That answer might be a little more complicated than you think. So when we look at the overall Apple MacBook lineup, it kind of is a jumbled mess if you don't spend days looking at Apple specs. At the low end, we've got the M1 MacBook Air, followed by the M2 MacBook Air, moving into the M2 MacBook Pro 13. Now, we move from those entry-level options, then we go into the big boys of the 14-inch and 16-inch M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks. I mean, that's all over the place. We got M1s, M2, Pros, Maxes. If you aren't steeped in Apple laptop lingo, it can be confusing, but don't worry, we'll be making a lot more sense of this as we go along today. This is an M2 MacBook Air buyer's guide in the sense that I'll point out specific use cases where I think it makes sense to buy the new MacBook Air, but holistically, there will be better options for certain use cases so we will be recommending more than just the M2 MacBook Air today. For that M2 though, the basic specs are you'll get the 8-core M2 processor, 8 or 10-core GPU, up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory, and up to a 2 terabyte solid state drive. It's essentially the same kinds of numbers as the M1 MacBook Air, but you can get a little bit more memory and a beefier GPU. The base model starts off at $1199, while the maxed out version will run you $2499. Actually, I'm really kind of impressed with what Apple's been able to come up with the new MacBook Air. It's like they improved over every single thing in the original, while also keeping the same battery life. That's, think about that, that's crazy. You get more power, a better screen, and a smaller body, but you get the same battery life? Like, Apple's coming up with some kind of like literal magic transistor techniques that the rest of the industry just seems like they cannot match ounce for ounce. Starting off, let's talk about the office worker or the student out there. I'm assuming you need something with great battery life, a decent amount of power, can plug into most modern display systems, and needs to be able to move between office, lecture, home, dorm mode interchangeably to work as your main computer. I think for this person, you've really got two options here. One, you could go full on as cheap as possible and get a refurbished version of the M1 MacBook Air. You can find these for 849 bucks on the Apple refurbished website. Here, you'll get the eight core M1 processor, seven core GPU, eight gigabytes of unified memory, and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. To this day, I think the M1 MacBook Air is the perfect daily driver computer for about 90% of people out there. And in this hypothetical office slash student scenario, I think this is the one that I would go with. It does have the Achilles heel of being designed on a fairly old chassis and with a pretty rough display as far as MacBooks go. So if you do need a little bit slimmer of a device with a better bright display to work in more mixed lighting or office conditions, I think I can easily then say, yes, get the M2 MacBook Air. That's gonna be the best for that situation. You'll get pretty much the same overall specs as the M1 MacBook Air, eight core CPU, slightly better GPU, same memory, same solid state drive. And while yes, it will be brand new at 1199, I do think though that this will be current for longer as it's based on Apple's latest design philosophy. And I would say that there is $200 in value to cover that bump in price going from the M1 to the M2 MacBook Air. It's not like there's $200 that you can't see what you're getting you can see the $200 in the computer. If you are some kind of coding student or creative, don't worry, I haven't forgotten you. I'm just gonna include you with the online creatives here in a little bit. There is a subsection of office workers though that I wanna give their own little space here. If you are somebody that primarily travels to give presentations such as project management, sales, professional education, etc., I have a slightly different response for you. Here, I would have to go with the MacBook Pro 14 or the MacBook Pro 16. Yes, it is substantially more money. However, you get a few really key benefits on these highest end chassis. One, you'll get an actual HDMI port, which I cannot overstate how important that is to me when I go around talking to clients. Seriously, all the tech enthusiasts that I see commenting online and in Twitter and in the comments, they love talking about how Thunderbolt will export to displays, but the majority of the professional world has old TVs and old monitors for their meetings, and having this HDMI port by itself has saved my bacon so many times because I will absolutely forget my dongle at least every other meeting. So not having to worry about that makes my life better. And if I can buy something that makes my life better, mm. you'll also get a much brighter display if you happen to need to brief off of the computer itself because of a different technical problem. And yes, technical problems happen quite often. Sure, $19.99 for the cheapest MacBook Pro 14 sucks, but you can find them refurbished from Apple for $17.99, and as a business expense, I'm 100% willing to pay for something that works without me needing to think about it. And in reality, when we talk about folks traveling for work primarily, 
I would probably lean more towards something like the MacBook Pro 16. I know that sounds crazy. I'm normally the person talking about smaller and more portable tech, but the MacBook Pro 16 is the closest you can get to an actual travel desktop computer that still fits in most backpacks. Seriously, this screen is as large as some actual computer monitors. You get serious speakers, it's not too heavy, and you can even use the high power mode once you get to the hotel or the workspace and plug into the wall. Plus, the MacBook Pro 16 has the best battery life of any MacBook ever, and if you travel a lot for work, this is the ultimate laptop. I used to be all about the MacBook Pro 13 and smaller computers, but when I travel for work now, I will instinctively grab my MacBook Pro 16 because I literally need nothing else and it's fantastic. If you are a gamer, which MacBook would I recommend? Well, I would recommend a Windows laptop that just so happens to have an Apple sticker placed on top of it. Yes, I know the new GPUs are actually pretty powerful and Apple even brought out the lead designer for Resident Evil 7 to come out and talk about how well the new M2s will work from a game design perspective, but I would still not recommend any MacBook for a primarily focused gamer. For the creatives out there, this is gonna have a really wide band of recommendations because the truth is with how well optimized even the M1 standard processor is you could totally run an entire YouTube channel, Instagram account, TikTok, everything from a base model M1 MacBook Air. So you got to keep that in the back of your mind while I make the rest of these recommendations. You could just buy the cheapest MacBook Air, heck even a Mac Mini, and be set very well. If you are a YouTuber creator, I do think that brand new M2 MacBook Air might be the best option for you. It's going to be incredibly lightweight, very small. It will handle all modern video codecs and photography files with ease, and that increase in screen and brightness means you can create essentially anywhere without needing to spend like motorcycle levels of dollars. Video editing does rely more on the GPU compared to someone working on a Zoom collaboration or working on a PowerPoint presentation, and I think the increased capabilities of the M2's GPU is worth investing in. Much like traveling office workers, you could rely on a MacBook Pro 14 or 16, but these are absolutely overkill if you are focusing on making YouTube videos. Like I said a few moments ago, I think even the Mac Mini is a phenomenal purchase, and those can be had for like 500 bucks. So don't necessarily lean into those higher end M1 Pro and Max options, because unless you have the specific need for that power, you are kind of wasting your money, and that money could have been better invested elsewhere in your production pipeline. But if you do have the need for power, these newest MacBook Pros are still so good, and I cannot believe it's so many months later. My personal power laptop is the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16. This comes with a 10-core M1 Max processor, up to 32-core GPU, 64 gigabytes of unified memory, and a staggering 8 terabyte solid-state drive. That's basically a portable production studio. I don't have that. I have a much less stacked version of it, and it costs, that higher-end model costs about as much as buying a production studio, but you cannot fault it for everything they pack into the chassis. And you can, again, you can do all that and carry it around in a small backpack. I don't think there are many folks out there that actually need a production studio in a can, but dang, there, if you do need it, there's nothing else I would point you to. I've got high-end Windows laptops at my house too, but there is just nothing that can touch the bigger MacBook Pros. They have fantastic battery life. They are thermally managed better than any laptop I've ever seen. They have literally the best display in the business with ProMotion built in, a billion colors, and HDR chops that are almost untouched even in dedicated computer monitors. Okay, we've talked about people that make money or grades with their computers, but what about folks that just want to pay bills or you just want to browse the internet? Well, thankfully for you, you don't need any of the raw power that we've talked about so far today. Honestly, you could use anything in this lineup and be perfectly fine. But if you were to plead with me for a recommendation, I'd again point you towards the M2 MacBook Air or the M1 MacBook Air. These are just really remarkable how much usable power you get in these devices. Even with the M2 announcement earlier this week, I don't think the M1 MacBook Air has been dethroned as the best overall option for regular people looking for a computer. You can find these for great deals all of the time and buying refurbished these will essentially get treated like brand new with the ability to be purchased with Apple Care, and you'll get the same return policy as buying the new stuff. Though it's kind of hard to recommend computers for regular home use because I don't feel like the home computer exists anymore. Even in my household, I only really use computers to play those few games and make YouTube videos. Right before I started my YouTube channel, I'd pretty much gone away from using a computer in my house anyway, and that was what, six years ago? I guarantee that if I didn't make these videos right now, 
I'd only have a phone and maybe I'd have a tablet. Please do not get spun up in the hype and think you need to spend $3,000 or more on a laptop to pay bills or FaceTime with family members. There are so many better things that can be done with that kind of money. So the M2 MacBook Air hasn't exactly become my default recommendation like the M1 MacBook Air, but I think there are enough use cases for it and I'm certainly excited to get one in hand. And if you like this video, click here to see my overview of the latest M2 MacBook Air. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.